Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll discuss uh, some algorithms for computing the discrete logarithms. Now, if you haven't watched uh, what the discrete logarithm problem is, I suggest you go back and watch the previous videos because this is going to be all based on that. Now, we're going to only see a couple of them. Uh, one of them, we already saw what it is, is the exhaustive search. And the other one is a little bit more efficient. Now, these algorithms are going to work in any cyclic group of order n. So meaning that if you have a group, as we discuss it in the sequence of videos, uh, and it's order n, this algorithm will also work for that. But we're going to do it in this particular group, Zn star, uh, because it's easier to do the computations there. So it's just uh, numbers. Now, remember what it's trying to do is uh, given alpha, which is a generator, and an element beta of my group, I want to compute the discrete log. So basically, I want to find x. And remember what that means is that this generator to the x is equal to the element beta. Now, there are several algorithms to do that. We're going to see only two, as I mentioned, because there are many of them. Uh, some of them are probabilistic methods, which we're not going to cover here. Now, the first one, uh, as I said, is the exhaustive search, which is all this. We call it also the brute force. Uh, which is basically you just check all the powers until you get beta. So we already did this in the previous videos. The new one, the one we're going to see today is Shank's baby step, giant step method. Um, that's just an algorithm which is a little bit better, the exhaustive search, but it still doesn't actually solve completely the problem, as it's still going to be very, very slow for uh, some values of n and alpha. So. So let's recall what we did in brute force. So C and star because it's a cyclic, that means that I can write down this one as a powers of alpha to the phi of n minus one. And the reason for that is because this group here has phi of n generators. Again, uh, all of this is based on what we did. So it's better you watch that other videos first before coming into this video. And beta is just a generator there. So because beta is in this list here, so beta has to be one of these powers. Now the exhaustive search is uh, you're gonna start computing all the powers of alpha until the very last one, which will be the worst case when you find beta to be this last one, until we obtain beta. So what that means here is here I have to do phi of n minus two modular exponentiations. Remember, these powers here are modulo z n. That's the operation of the group. You multiply two elements here, modulo modulo n and uh, if n is large phi of n is will also be large minus true so this will, this will be a lot of uh, operations it will require, require a long time so that's the uh, brute force attack now the one we're going to describe today which is uh, this chanks baby step giant step method this is a time memory trade-off meaning that it's going to reduce a little bit of time at the cost of ex uh, extra storage and in this case what we're going to do is we're going to storage or save a table a table lookup to look at some data later which i'll explain in a second okay so what is the idea of the algorithm the idea of the algorithm is like this okay so i'm going to define a number m which is the this is the ceiling function of the square root of phi of n uh, this phi of n here is just the number of elements in the group. So it's the square root of the number of elements in that group. That will be m that will come into uh, uh, place later. Now what I want to do, remember, is I want to compute the discrete log on base alpha beta, which is, gives me an x, which is, means exactly what is, is here. This element, the generator to this exponent is beta. Now, because m is this square root, you can rewrite that x, this exponent, as a two-digit representation. And I'm going to write down this notation. It's going to be an x sub g times m plus x sub b. And this notation in g and b is going to uh, make sense in a second. These two digits are the representation of x uh, here. And the digits are between 0, including 0, and less, strictly less than m. And that x is going to be represented like this. So if I were to show you that this is correct, I'll have to prove that for m defined this way, I can always write down x in this representation with x, g, and x, b. But I'm not going to prove that. So I'm going to use this representation. 
Now, uh, I, of course, I know that that x exists, that exponent exists because this is a cyclic group, so I know this is going to happen. I don't know which one exactly, but let's manipulate this a little bit. So, what is x here? x is this expression here, this x to the, uh, xg times m plus xb, which is equal to beta. Remember, this is true in the group. I'm going to uh, use uh, here the law of exponents, which is also true in that group. So this, I kind of split it up as a multiplication using the law of exponents here. So this addition in the exponent is multiplication. And I'm going to multiply on both sides by the inverse of this element here. So I'm going to multiply basically by x to the uh, minus g, x g times m. So basically it's like dividing by this element on both sides. Think about it that way. So we're doing a little bit of algebra here. And so we get this, that x b is equal to beta times x to the negative x g times m, which it comes from this equation here. And then finally we arrive to that x b is equal to this, which I apply again another law of exponents, which is I separate here these two exponents here, which gives me exactly the same as this one. Now, what do we want to do here? Uh, I want to know what is x. Now, m is known, is the square root of that number we saw there. The only thing we know, don't know here is the xg and xb. So if I'm able to find these two things, I will be able to find that discrete log or the exponent of alpha. Uh, so let's see it here. So we want to find the numbers x, g, and xm separately, So which is a the divide and conquer strategy here. So what do we do? So this equation here is actually the base for the baby step, that giant step algorithm. So this is going to be all we're going to do. You will see in a second uh, here, the algorithm I'm going to show you is based on whatever, what all I did over here. So what is the baby step? The baby step is computing that exponent xb. That's what the b there stands for. So that's called the baby step. So we're going to compute and store all the values of x alpha to the xb for this xb between 0, including 0 and m, which is that uh, digit representation. So that's where we have to uh, um, store all the data that we need. So we're going to trade time for storing the data. And then the giant step, which is finding the xg, so checks for the first xg, so that this happens. So this equation that is here is exactly the one that I have over here. So basically what we are doing is the following thing. I'm taking alpha to the xb. I'm not computing all the powers of alpha. I'm just computing up to one less than the square root. So it reduces a little bit the computations from the one that is the brute force. So I just have to do uh, square root of the computation I was doing before. Now I store all of this and then what I do is I'm gonna find this here which I do is basically I do all of this and then I try all the xg's until I found that this is equal to this one. Okay if this doesn't make sense for you now don't worry we'll go into an example. So I'm just trying to explain exactly where this algorithm comes from. So let's look at this here. So, so that's the idea. So the idea is that we're going to store all of this x to the alpha to the xb and then we're going to find the first xg for which this happens and then I will be sure that this pair xb, the baby step and the giant step all together will give me the exponent that I'm looking for or the discrete uh, logarithm. So the idea is we're going to turn all of this into an algorithm. So what is the actual algorithm? So I'm going to write down the pseudocode here. So this is the algorithm from the Chanks, baby step, and Jaius 10 method. Okay, so what is the input? So the input is, as always, because we are dis uh, describing here uh, the discrete log. So God is going to give me a generator of Z and star, which we can actually check that this is a generator with some of the techniques we saw in previous videos. And they give me some element here and z and star. So the output should be the discrete logarithm uh, in base alpha of beta, which is the exponent x that beta needs to be equal to, alpha needs to be equal to beta. 
So I was, I was mentioning there before, so the step number one, so this is the algorithm actually. Uh, the first step is I'm going to compute the ceiling of the square root of phi of n. Now phi of n is the number of elements in, in C n star. If this group was another order, it will be the square root of the order uh, of that group. And that, that means that whatever number of elements you have in that group, which in this case is phi of n, our group. This is what we're going to construct the table. So we're going to construct a table of, of pairs of numbers. And the first one is going to be xb, and then the second one is going to be alpha to the xb to that exponent. And this exponentiation here is modulo n. Modulo n because we are looking at this group zn star here. And we're going to do that table for all xb between 0, uh, including 0, and m. So this is the sta this table I was talking about that should be stored for lookup. So we're going to store it and then look up. What we're going to look up is the second entry here. So once we get the second entry, we can guess what the exponent is. Now, if you want to do this in practice, meaning that you're going to use this for in some programming language in Java or any other programming language, this should be stored in a hash table. And the reason it should be stored in a hash table is because we're going to look up this table from the second component. So we're going to hash, that's the one that will be hash there. Now, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. We're going to do the examples without doing anything about hash tables. Just basically, just I'm going to make a table and that's going to be the one for lookup. This uh, third step is I have to compute alpha inverse. And the reason I have to compute alpha inverse is because I have to know what alpha to the minus m is. Okay, I'm going to scroll up here and show you again why I have to compute al alpha to the minus m. So I'm going to be scrolling up here a little bit. Uh, if you can see here, alpha to the minus m is important for the computation because I'm going to use it to make this comparison here. So I need to know what this al alpha to the minus m is. So I need to do that computation here in step number three. Now, well, this alpha to the minus m, using a, again the law of exponent, that's just the inverse of alpha to the mi to the m, with whatever that m is, this the ceiling of the square root of the order of your group. And now I'm gonna define a new variable gamma, which I'm gonna store beta and beta times all these powers of this guy here. So you will see in a second that that for loop that you're gonna see now is what's going to do, let me scroll back here again, it's what I make, it's going to make run all of this. So it's going to make all these computations one by one, and it's going to look up at the table that has to store all these values. So that's what the for loop is, is for. So the for loop is going to start like this. I'm going to start xg from 0 to n minus 1. Of course, that's the, all the range of xg. Now, if that gamma that we started with beta. If that gamma is equal to uh, alpha to the xb for some uh, xb, then I'm going to return immediately, I'm going to return uh, this xg times m plus xb. That will be the discrete log. Once that's done, once this happens, you're going to stop the algorithm there. So you don't have to do it anymore because we already found the discrete log. If that's not the case for this xg here, what we're going to do is going to update gamma, which is whatever you had in gamma before times alpha to the minus m, which is basically, let me scroll up again. What I'm doing is I'm computing all of these expressions here. That's why I'm updating my gamma in that way. And so I do that until I get an answer. Now, because uh, this... Uh, group is cyclic, you will get an answer. Um, whether or not you find it in the amount of time that you need, that's another matter, but this algorithm will give you an answer. Um, if the numbers are big, of course, this is going to run for a long time. But in, um, So it will give you an answer, this. So that's the end. So in the previous algorithm, uh, what we have there, here, it will give us all the answer. Now, if you see here, uh, uh, one of the things that I did here is compute alpha to the minus m, which is basically amounts to find the inverse of alpha. Now, the inverse of alpha, one way to compute it is like this, and then you will have to go back all the way when we did 
uh, the number theory for for um, uh, this class to be able to remember how you do that. So in the previous algorithm, as I mentioned, that we need to compute the inverse of alpha, which is, uh, and this is modulo n. Now this is done using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So that's the one that you have to remember. And so why is that uh, the inverse? So let me recall that. Now because alpha is in here, remember all the elements of this group uh, have no common factors with n, which that means is that the GCD between alpha and n is equal to one. Uh, we saw one theorem that says if this happens, it means that I can get a linear combination between alpha and n that gives me one, which is exactly what I have here. So you use, use the extended clean algorithm to find s and t in such a way that alpha times s plus t times n is equal to one. Once you find those coefficients uh, alpha and t, this alpha is the inverse of uh, of of alpha modulo n. So that's what will you do here. Now in this video, I'm gonna put a couple of links uh, here in the video. So that will take you to the two videos that describe how to do the extended Euclidean algorithm. So you will be able to find that is that number x here, which is the inverse of alpha, which is essential for this uh, baby step giant step step algorithm. So look at the links that I have now there in the video. Uh, if you don't remember how to do this, go ahead and review it. Okay, so I'll, I will stop the video now. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go over one example of this uh, baby step, giant step algorithm. So I will see you in the next video.